Hello and welcome to House Building Digest series number nine, which will be uh, on various aspects of painting. My name is Dr. Shailesh Kumar Agarwal, Executive Director of BMTPC. Through this digest series, BMTPC is reaching out to common men to provide useful information about various essential activities involved in house construction, including technical and non-technical matters associated with building materials and construction technologies. Every individual has a dream of owning a house and through this series, we will slowly unravel myths and misconceptions about building construction. The language used here is simple so that it is understood by one and all. Having learned about uh, plastering in the last uh, housing, house building digest, the next step, uh, step is to paint. Painting is the practice of applying paint, pigment, color, or other medium to a surface. It can be applied in form of a liquid, which on drying forms a thin film on the painted surfaces. The essential function of this paint film is to provide protection at the same time decoration uh, to your surface. Painting is the most affordable and quickest option to decorate or improve your home appearance. When accomplished correctly, painting adds real value to your home. Economical cost and a pleasing appearance, appearance are possible when using the best painting ideas and techniques. It is therefore essential that homeowner should get conversant with the various issues involved in the process. Painting enables the masonry, concrete, wood, metal, or such other surface to resist vagaries of uh, nature, thereby extending the life of the structure. The type of paint to be applied depends upon the surface to be painted and the finish required by the home owner. It also depends upon the location, say exterior or interior. A quality paint should have a good covering capacity in terms of area and be fluid enough to spread evenly in a thin coat and dry quickly, forming a tough and durable film without showing any brush marks or cracks. The type of paint and the color can be decided in consultation uh, with the architect. Different paint manufacturers advertise about the quality of paints and have shade cards. With, with the help of uh, these shade cards, uh, you can select the colors and color schemes. The process of painting can be divided mainly into three, three main parts, pre-printing -pre work, surface preparation, and painting. Let's discuss them one by one. Pre-painting work include preparation of surfaces to be painted, crack filling, water proofing, etc. It should be seen that they are undertaken to ensure maximum life for the final paint film. Next is surface preparation, which is very important. It refers to the process of making the surface fit for paint application. For example, if you are painting your interior walls, you would need to make them smooth by applying plaster of Paris or putty. Similarly, if it is a wooden or metallic uh, surface, removal of surface defects and cleaning of the surface becomes of paramount importance. Next is painting, which includes the steps to be followed in getting the final paint film on the surface. This process is different for different type of surfaces. In any case, it involves application of base coat and application of surface finish. A majority of defects which may occur subsequently are on account of non adherence to the ideal painting process. And that's why it is utmost important to, uh, to know the painting process. Uh, there are two basic types of paints which are available. One is water-based, also known as latex paints, and another one is oil-based. Water-based paints are washable and dry quickly. On the other hand, oil-based paints uh, take longer to dry, but they are very rich in color and durable. 
both oil and water based paints are available in the market in a range of finish finishes from uh, dull to very high gloss these paints which are available in the market fall under three major categories distemper emulsion paints and solvent based paints let's discuss them one by one distemper distemper is perhaps the most economical type of paint available in the market it can be classified as whitewash job the major constituent of distemper are chalk lime water and some coloring agent uh, if necessary distemper is is a water based paint next is emulsions this type of paint is also water based and provide a rich and matte finish to interior walls it imparts excellent durability to the painted surface and gives the wall a just painted look it is washable and the stains can be removed easily by wiping with a cloth dipped in a mild soap solution the paint film is also fungus resistant let's discuss solvent based paints uh, they come with different names luster paints enamel paints and oil paints all of them fall under the category of solvent based paints they cannot be premixed with water the advantage with these paints is that they really last long and produce rich and desiring effects on the wall the type of paint to be selected that that is whether it should be oil based or water based is influenced by number of factors let's discuss them now water based paints are economical and easy to apply glossy oil based paints tend to be more impermeable to water although they they may bubble up if the surface beneath is damp they are costly and involve professional skills in their application at the same time oil based paints last longer and give a good finish normally oil paints tend to peel off when subjected to daily temperature uh, variations including alternate wetting and drying accordingly paints suited for exterior locations are to be applied for the exterior of house oil based paint should not be applied directly to fresh masonry or galvanized iron in either case it will probably result in bad finish oil based coatings are a good choice in two circumstances number one when repainting exterior surfaces with heavy chalking and secondly when repainting any exterior or interior surface that has multiple layers of old oil based paint oil based paints are available in the market in ready made form however they can also be made at home by mixing the different ingredients in proper proportions on the other hand water based paints are said to have an upper hand for exterior applications as it allows the house to breathe and does not crack as readily water based paint paints are also durable dry quickly with little odor and can be cleaned up with soap and water oil based paints uh, though they hold up better over the long term have stronger fumes dry slowly and require flammable solvents such as turpentine and paint thinner for cleanup quality latex paints offer significant performance advantages as well compared to oil based paints top quality exterior latex paints have greater durability color retention and chalk resistance so they continue to look good for years it is said that top quality acrylic latex paints are an excellent choice when painting any of exterior surface uh, particularly in areas that experience freezing temperatures or newly plastered surface or any masonry surface the home owner must select the paint properly in consultation with the architect water based paints are most commonly used as i told you for finishing various surfaces in the house also known as latex paint it has two constituents one is binder that is dissolved in water in general water based paints are less toxic and are odorless top quality oil based paints on the other hand have excellent adhesion characteristics and they get a tight grip on the surface being painted as 
a good adhesion, uh, adhesion is essential for durable paint job. However, oil based coatings tend to oxidize and get brittle over time, which can lead to cracking in exterior applications and yellowing and chipping uh, in interior applications. Having explained these paints to you, let's see the constituents of oil based paints, which include the following a base, an inert uh, filler or extender, coloring pigment, a vehicle, a solvent or thinner, and a dryer. Let me explain you all of them one by one. Base is essentially a pigment which forms a chief in ingredient of a paint. A base is generally uh, a metallic oxide is, and is used in form of a powder. The most important function of the base is to form an opaque co coating to hide the surface to be painted. An inert filler or extender is also a pigment added in a paint to reduce its cost. It also modifies the weight of the paint and makes it more durable. Coloring pigment is a white or color pigment to get the desired color of the paint. A vehicle is a liquid which acts as a binder for various pigments that is between base, extender and coloring pigment. It makes the paint in the state of a fluid thereby helping it in spreading its ingredients uniformly on the surface to be painted. Refined linseed oil is commonly used as vehicle in oil paints. A solvent or thinner is a liquid which thins the consistency of paint and evaporates after the paint film has been applied. It imparts brush ability, smoothness and easy flow. Turpentines, pure oils, etc. are commonly used as solvent or thinner. Last but not the least is dryer which are uh, materials containing metallic compounds and are used in small quantities for accelerating the drying of the paint. The commonly used dryers are lead oxide, lead acetate, etc. The type of paint to be applied depends upon the surface to be painted, whether it is wall, whether it is plaster or on a wood, wooden surface or on a metallic surface. It also depends on its location, exterior or interior. It also depends on aesthetics and the budget of the homeowner. It can be in form of a whitewash, color wash or distemper. Plasters, concrete surfaces, etc. can be finished with whitewashing, color washing, distempering or applying uh, cement paints, which will be discussed now. Whitewash is a form of a paint which is made from mixture of slate lime, chalk, water and other ingredients. It is extensively used in India for painting wall surfaces. Whitewash can be applied to brick, concrete and other wall surfaces. Before a new work is whitewashed, the surface should be thoroughly brushed free from mortar droppings and other foreign material. For whitewashing, uh, the surface can be prepared from fresh stone white lime. The lime ha has to be thoroughly slaked, mixed and stirred with sufficient water to make it in a thin cream. Indigo or commonly known as neel, up to 3 grams per kg of lime dissolved in water is usually added and stirred well. Water is then uh, to be added at the rate of 5 liters per kg of lime to produce a milky solution. This has to be allowed to stand for a period of 24 hours and then is cleaned through a clean coarse cloth. Uh, gum at the rate of 40 grams for each uh, 10 cubic uh, decimeter of cream dissolved in hot water is then added. The whole solution is kept properly steered. This white wash is then applied with moon brushes, as you can see in this uh, picture, uh, to the specified number of coats. Each coat is allowed to dry before the application of next coat. For new surface, three or more coats are usually applied till the surface represents a uniform and a smooth finish. Doors and windows and other surfaces should be protected from droppings and splashes while carrying out uh, the, the whitewash. The primary advantage to whitewash is that it is very economical and it is easy to retreat the whitewash surface on a frequent basis. Whitewashing is an easier way to brighten the interior 
uh, uh, interiors of the house even during the uh, winter months. Now let's move to color washing. It's an improvement over white washing as it gives a better finish and longevity, although it is comparatively costlier. The process of color washing is almost the same as white washing except for a few variations. For preparation of color wash, color minerals which do not get affected by lime are added to white wash. Neil is Neil or indigo is not to be added in this case. For new work, the priming coat is, is of white wash with lime. Two or more coats of color wash are then applied on the entire surface to give it a smooth, uniform and even finish. Now let's see distempering. Distempering is a costlier affair than white or um, color washing, but cheaper than paints, easier to work, and it also lasts longer. Distempering presents a smoother and distinctive uh, appearance than the ordinary white or color washing. Their performance is said to be better in drier climates. They are generally used over plaster surface to which a priming coat of whiting has been applied. Distempering can be defined as water paints consisting of whiting, coloring pigment and glue mixed in water. Distemper may give a washable or non-washable surface depending upon the medium used. Uh, there are two types of distempering. One is dry, dry distempers and other one is oil-based distempers or OBD. The type of distemper to be used depends upon the location that is interior or exterior. Dip distempers for exterior use are provided with weather resistant ingredients during the process of manufacturing. Dry distempers provide slightly better finish than color washing and accordingly adds to the cost and are readily available in the market. For preparation of the material for application, dry distempers obtained from the market are stirred slowly in clean water, preferably warm, using about 6 liters of water per kg of distemper and allowed to stand for at least 30 minutes, preferably overnight before use. The mixture is stirred well during use to maintain even consistency. Not more than one day requirement has to be mixed. Remember, before application, uh, the surface for uh, the application is to be scrubbed clean. Newly plastered surfaces should be dried uh, for two months before application of distemper. The priming coat should be of whitewashing followed by two or more coats of distemper till the surface shows an even color. The application should be with proper distempering brushes. The successive coats are to be applied when the previous coat has dried. Now let's move to another category of distempering that is oil bound distempering. It gives a better finish and lasts slightly longer, although they are costlier than dry distempering. Oil bound washable distempers of approved brand and manufacturing uh, manufacture are easily available nowadays in the market. On a new look, an undercoat of paint that is primer is applied to prepare the surface for the application, application of oil uh, bound distempers. The main function of priming coat or primer is to provide the foundation for the subsequent coats. The primer can be a cement primer or distempering primer as per the recommendation of uh, manufacturer. The distemper has to be diluted, diluted with water or any other thinner as per the recommendations. Before application, the surface to be distempered has to be cleaned as usual by washing and scrubbing. The surface is then allowed to dry for at least 48 hours and then be sent prepared, sent paper to give uh, a smooth and even surface. Any unevenness is removed by applying putti made with plaster of Paris mixed with water on the entire surface, including filling up of the undulations and sandpapering the surface after it has dried. A 24 hour interval is to be allowed before application of the new coat. Brushes meant for the purpose are to be used for its application. Now let's move to next category, which is Cement paints. Cement paints give good protection from severe climatic conditions like rain, heat, water, humidity, saline atmosphere uh, like uh, near uh, sea shores or coastal region. By its application, the growth of fungus and bacteria on masonry surface is also prevented. Such a paint 
hides out various surface irregularities, roughness, etc., thereby giving a smooth and pleasing appearance. Cement paint has to be mixed with water in two stages. The first stage comprises of mixing two parts of cement paint with one part of water and is stirred properly and allowed to stand for five minutes. The second stage comprises of adding further one part of water to the mix and stirring uh, thoroughly to obtain a mix of uniform workability and uniform consistency. The solution so obtained is applied on a dry and wet surface with brushes or spraying machines. The, the completed surface is to be watered after the day's work. The second coat can be applied with 24 hours of application of the initial coat. Three or more coats of waterproof cement paint are found necessary uh, to get a uniform shade. Cement paints are to be mixed in such quantities which can be used within a short span of its mixing. Now let's see uh, uh, the wooden surface uh, painting. The process of painting on uh, new woodwork broadly includes preparation of surface, priming and finishing. The woodwork to be painted should be, should be properly seasoned, clean, dry and free from dust. The surface is smoothened by rubbing it with fine grade of sand or glass paper. The next step is to apply a priming coat on the wooden surface to fill the pores of wood by penetrating the primer in the wood. The main function of the primary primer, priming coat or primer is to provide the foundation for the subsequent coats. After the primer has dried, the Second coat or undercoat are applied till the color of almost the desired shade is achieved. The finishing coat is uh, applied after the undercoat has dried and uh, an even shade is obtained. Next is varnishing. Varnishing also plays an important role in finishing wood, wooden surfaces of doors, windows and floors, etc. Varnish is also applied on unpainted furniture and other wooden surfaces to decorate the surface. Painted surfaces can also be varnished to enhance the appearance of the paint and increase the durability of paint film. The essential constituents of all varnishes is resin, which is dissolved in oils, turpentine or alcohol. The liquid dries or evaporates and leaves a hard, transparent and glossy surface. There are a number of types of varnishes available in the market and the type to be used is dependent on the job to be uh, done. Next is wax polishing, which is usually applied on the varnish surface to modify its elegance and protecting the undercoat. It is mostly used for polishing cement concrete, mosaic or terrazzo uh, floors. Next is uh, French polishing. French polishing is a wood finishing technique which gives a very high glossy surface with a deep color. It is a process and not a material. The finish is considered to be one of the most beautiful ways to finish highly figured wood, but it is also recognized to be sensitive to damage. The material is shellac, uh, although there are several other shellac uh, based finishes. In this type of finish, many thin coats of shellac dissolved in alcohol are applied using a rubbing pad. The process is lengthy and very repetitive and the finish is obtained through a specific combination of different rubbing motions. Now let's see about the metallic surfaces. On metallic surfaces, painting is done in two steps involving priming followed by your application of a finishing coat. Most new metal products available in the market either in pre-finished form or primed form. Any bare, unoxidized surface should be primed with a proper metal primer. Ferrous materials like steel, iron can usually be primed with a standard gray or white metal primer. On the other hand, uh, galvanized metal uh, should be primed with a product designed for that purpose. Usually, white galvanized metal primer is used for the purpose. Further, aluminum, can be primed with galvanized metal primer or the standard gray primer. Latex also bonds to aluminum and can be used uh, for a primer under latex finish paint. On slightly rusted surface, uh, gray metal primer can be used for good results. For heavily rusted surfaces, red metal primer or iron oxide is advised to be 
use. Once uh, properly primed, most metal interior metal surfaces can be painted with almost any quality paint. However, metal doors and heat resistors usually fare uh, better with an oil-based finish paints. Gloss metal enamels can also be used as finish paints as they provide the good durability, although sometimes they are more difficult to work with. Semi-gloss or eggshell gloss uh, trim paint are said to be good choice for steel doors. Metallic surfaces are painted for prevention of rust as well as obtaining a good appearance. For the preparation of the surface, it is important to remove the rust by scrapping uh, oil and uh, grease, etc., which can be removed by washing the surface with petrol or lime water. The dried and clean surface is then given a priming coat, which usually consists of paints with oxide of iron. Two or more coats are then applied either with brush or by spraying on the metallic surface. It should be seen that each coat is applied after the previous coat has dried. Galvanized iron uh, uh, works are almost amongst the most difficult surface to be painted due to its inherent properties. It is always advisable uh, uh, to paint the surface after it has been exposed to weather for almost a year. The priming and finishing coats are applied in case of other metallic surface. Finishing or on plastered surface, the housing, uh, the house owner may also choose to directly paint the plastered surface for reasons of appearance and longevity by methods other than whitewashing, coloring, uh, color washing and stampering. The preparation of plastered surface to be painted requires a good amount of attention. The plastered surface should be painted only after the surface has dried properly. In case of new work, the surface should be initially washed with dilute solutions of zinc sulfate. The holes should be filled with plaster of Paris and the surface uh, should be rubbed uh, smooth. Then primer for base coat can be prepared by mixing equal parts of white and uh, red lead in linseed oil. After the drying of priming surface, two or more coats of new desired paints can be applied. New plastered surfaces can be painted quite easily with emulsion paints as well. Plaster or concrete surface can also be painted with uh, cement uh, paints. There are three main methods of application of paints. Uh, uh, one is by, uh, by brushing or by rolling or by spraying. The method to be adopted depends upon a large number of factors, including the type of surface, type of paint, budget of the home owner. Let's discuss them now. Application with a simple brush is the least expensive method and is the most popular, although it is not the most effective. Brush marks may show up, brush marks may show up quickly on the surface if painting is not applied properly. Using a professional painter and a good quality paint brush will help in improving upon the finish. The second method is uh, by use of a roller. This is an easy method of application and the expenditure involved may not be very high. Although a trained painter is always required for the purpose, it is possible to get a very smooth finish by rolling. Spraying uh, produces best results on the surface. Uh, it gives a finish that is truly smooth, although it is expensive and requires professional painter uh, to do the job. This is all about painting. Now, let me quickly uh, uh, apprise you about the common defects in painting uh, through these slides. Painted surfaces can display a large number of effects if the work has not been carried out properly or the quality of material used for painting is not up to the mark. These defects may be in form of blistering, peeling, efflorescence, chalking, etc. Blistering uh, paint is identified by small or medium-sized bubbles or blisters under the paint film. They can be removed by scrapping the blistered paint and letting the surface dry. Priming coat is then applied on the defective surface, keeping it in shade and non-humid conditions and finally applying good quality paint. Efflorescence usually occurs in painted uh, masonry construction and is identifiable uh, by crusty white salt deposits that bubble through the paint film. 
In this case, the source of dampness should be identified and eliminated. All efflorescence and loose flaking, chalking paint is then removed by scrapping with a wire, wire brush before repainting. The area is then cleaned with a trisodium phosphate cleaning solution and rinsed with clean water. After complete drying, the surface is then painted with a high quality latex house paint. Chalking is identifiable as a fine chalking powder that forms on the surface of a paint film. Although some chalking is normal, it becomes excessive in dry arid climates where there is a little rain. For repairing the surface, work can be done in the same manner as that of efflorescence. Peeling paint is also very common paint problem and can be caused either by moisture or poor adhesion. Peeling due to poor adhesion is characterized by the paint peeling and separating from an earlier paint layer. Uh, for repairing such surfaces, the peeled paint surface is scrubbed followed by smoothening by filling up these scratches etc. and finally repainting with a high quality acrylic uh, latex paint. While pe peeling occurs due to external uh, moisture, the source of moisture is first removed and painting is done as in earlier case. On the other hand, if Peeling occurs due to interior moisture. It is advisable to provide proper ventilation in the affected area and then carrying out the repair in uh, the, the manner just explained to you. The finish should preferably be done with high quality acrylic latex paint. The measures suggested here uh, are indicative for the information only and it is always advised to hire a professional for the purpose uh, who would First, identify the problem and give suggestions based on local conditions. As explained uh, uh, to all of you in this digest, painting of different surfaces require specific measures to be taken for each. The type of paint to be applied depends upon the surface and the location, whether exterior or interior, to be painted, type and color of paint, budget of the homeowner, and the level, level of aesthetics to be achieved. The quality of paint should be such that it can be spread easily, is long lasting, covers large area of each fixed unit of paint and is also economical. All painting process should necessarily commence with the preparation of surface, application of a primer coat and application of finishing coats to give a smooth and even color surface and finish which is pleasing to the eye. Various paint manufacturers come out with their shade cards, color schemes which even provide with the details of application for achieving best results. The house owners are advised to study them carefully before finalization of uh, painting. The advice of the architect would be very crucial in this regard uh, to give a decent look uh, to the house. I hope this building digest number nine will come handy when you plan uh, to paint your house and it will also create awareness. Uh, the, the house building digest can be downloaded from www.bmtpc.org. The next house building digest will cover water supply. Thank you very much.